Hi and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to go over how to record audio. Now in this video, I'm going to use the Roland Duo Capture USB interface for most of the examples. At the end, I'll do an example also using the Samson Go mic. Now I did the USB setup in a different video for both of those devices, so check that out for more information on how to configure them for your computer. Now to get started, I'm going to create a new project. I just called it Recording Demo, and I'll use the normal template. Now I'm going to change the screen set to the recording setup from this drop down here, which is recording audio. You don't have to do this step, but it does give you a nice setup for recording. Now we're going to take a look at the very first track. This is where we're going to put down our audio and just make sure it's configured right for working with the dual capture. Now a few words about how the dual capture is set up. The dual capture works with dynamic microphones. I've got an SM57 connected to the quarter inch input on the device. On the back, there's some settings. I have the input monitoring turned on by pushing in the first button, and the next two buttons are out. High Z, which is used for guitars, and the input gain needs to be out for use with this type of microphone. We'll talk more about the input monitoring in a minute. On the top of the unit, on the left, is the input volume. I've set that up so as I play my guitar, I get a little bit of blinking on the red peak light. We don't want that to be unsteady, but if it blinks a little bit, that's fine. And then the output is set up so that I can hear it in my headphones. And I do have headphones connected to the output of the device. As I do the recording example, you'll be hearing what I hear in the headphones. Now to record, we need to make sure that the input is set up correctly on the track. We're going to use the inspector area for that. Down here at the bottom, you can see the input output for each track. Right now, the input is set to none. We need to set it to the dual capture. So I'm going to click this and then dual capture. And I have three options, left, right, and stereo. Most interfaces, the stereo pairs are configured as left or right. We could choose stereo with this device, and we'd get a stereo track, but it's really a mono signal. So we're going to choose the left input. So with the input set up like this, all I need to do is engage the record enable for that track. You can see it's picking up my voice through the guitar microphone. And then if I click this button, I'll start recording. I'm going to do a test recording. You can also see that the shortcut here is just the R key on the keyboard. That's very handy if you're recording by yourself to just use the keyboard shortcut. You don't have to grab the mouse then. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to hit R and play a chord on the guitar so we can hear if this is going to work. Let's just play this back. All right, so our test recording worked just fine. Now, we're going to do another example, but first, let's talk about input monitoring and latency. Now, this device has a button for input monitoring. Basically, what that does is it allows the signal to go right through the device into your headphone, so there's absolutely no delay. However, you can also monitor directly through the software. In that case, you would take the hardware button and turn it off, and then you turn on this input echo right here. There's some advantages in certain situations to doing it that way. However, you will hear a latency or delay through the system. That's particularly annoying if you're recording vocals through headphones. Now, if you want to reduce that latency, then you need to go into preferences in your audio device setup and into this panel here or this slider, depending on which drivers you have loaded, and try lowering this latency, and it will take some of that delay out. With audio recording, it's the difference between when you speak and when you hear the result. Even a latency of a few milliseconds can be pretty annoying. That's why I really like to use the direct input monitor feature of the audio interface whenever possible. So with that set up that way, I'm going to leave this feature turned off Next, I'm going to configure the metronome to give myself a couple of measures to get ready before the recording starts. So I, again, do that in Preferences. Under here, under Project Metronome, I can add a number of measures of count-in. I'm going to make that two, so I get two measures of count-in. I'll just click Apply and OK. And then we'll close that dialog box. So with that all set, I'm going to rewind, I'll use R to start recording, and I'll record a few measures of this tune. All 
All right, so now that I have the part recorded, let's play it back and see how that sounds. All right, so that worked out pretty well. Now, if I want to record that part again to get a stereo effect, all I need to do is disable the record enable on the first track and enable it on the next track. I need to set track two to the correct input for my microphone. When I click on a track, the inspector will now switch to the track that I have selected. So I'm going to change the input on this track to make sure that it's set to the right one. It's set to stereo, which would work, but I'd prefer to keep it as a mono file. So I'll set this one also to left. I want to make sure we disable it here. We'll wind up recording on two tracks at the same time. So I'm going to rewind, record again. I'm going to play the same part, and that'll give me a doubling effect. Now that I have my second part in, I can just disable record. I'm going to rewind and play back. So those are the basics of recording. Now, if we want to get a bigger stereo effect, we can expand this a little bit and find the pan control here. And I'm going to pan the parts left and right. And that gives me a nice wide doubling effect. Now for the next example, I've reconfigured my system to use the Samson Go mic. I went over the setup for that in a previous video, so check that out if you have questions on that. One thing I want to point out with any of these audio interfaces, if you don't hear playback, make sure that the master is set to point to the output of the audio interface that you want to use. So to do that, just click master here and then in the inspector, you can go right here and make sure that it's set to the output. Like right here, I want speakers, Samson Go mic. So with that set up, I should be able to hear playback from my previous tracks. And that's working fine. So I'm going to rewind and configure a track to use the Go mic. The setup's about the same, but there is a little difference, so I'll show you how that works. First, I click on the next track go to the inspector where it says none here for the input. I want to set that to the Go mic. So I'll set that to MME devices. I can choose left, right, or stereo. Since the Go mic is mono, I'll just choose the left input to get the single input. I'll record enable this track. First, I'm going to mute one of these tracks so there's not quite so many things playing back. And I'll start recording by hitting R on the keyboard to start recording. <laughs> So the recording is working, but I didn't hear the metronome. Now normally this would not be a problem, but if you switch from one interface to the other, sometimes this happens. Go into Preferences, under Project Metronome, and you can see that the metronome output is not set up. I need to set that to come out of my Samson Go mic. With that set, I should be in good shape to record this part using the Go mic. So I'll delete this, just select it, hit Delete, make sure that I rewind, and now I'm going to lay down the part. All right, now we can just listen back. Now one thing to point out with the Go mic, since it has no input or output level controls right on the device, you need to use the sound configuration panel from the control panel in Windows. You can access that in Windows by right clicking in the lower right on the speaker icon if you have that set up that way and choosing recording devices. Or you can access the sound panel like this from the Windows control panel. To set the input level you can go to recording select the Go mic, and then Properties, and then right here we have Levels. And then this sets the input level on the Go mic. Check the manufacturer's website or instructions for more information on, on how this works. So now you should have a better understanding of how 
audio recording works in Music Creator 6. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.